Listen up. Or run for cover. Dropping knowledge. From the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. On today's episode, I've got a special guest in from Florida, all the way from Florida. Great dude, big dude in the insurance world and 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 outside of it. Welcome, Mr. Jay Atkins. Thanks for having me, Brad Lee. Dude, it's my pleasure. I wish you'd have came in here a million other times, but uh, you're hard to get a hold of. Uh, I'm a little busy. A little busy. Yes, sir. I hear you're doing big things. We're doing huge things. We dude, don't do big. We do huge. Dude goes out and trains insurance companies, mainly Allstate or anybody really, but he has a big deal with Allstate. Greg Gray sitting on the couch. He's like a damn celebrity. Man, today's, today's show is going to be bomb dizzle. Now, for the listeners, go out and rate and share this podcast. We're already reaching 7.9 billion people on earth. But I heard there's 19 folks in Botswana that have never heard of it, and we want to reach them. So rate the podcast and share the podcast and get me some new subscribers because that pushes it up the rankings. And then I bet you we find those 19 folks. Would you do that for us? We appreciate it. Now, Jay, have you heard Dropping Bombs before? Uh, I listen to it every single morning during my workout. So you know the deal then? I know the deal. Okay, so again, the bomb is when people should listen up because you said something that needs to be listened to. So your goal is probably to try to get me to drop some bombs because that means you're spitting fire, you're providing value, you're rocking and rolling. Make sense? I only spit fire. All right, well, let me ask you a question because you weren't always rich. You didn't always have a wraith with starry night roofs. What happened? Uh, Tell me your story. Well, I, uh, I grew up in uh, Lima, Ohio. Lima? Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. I was born in San Diego. You know, that's where the lima bean comes from. I, I did not know that. Well, now you know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I grew up in Lima and uh, grew up, my father was a maintenance man in a hospital. My mother was a housekeeper in a hospital and we never had money. I was always told, you can't do this because we don't have money. So when I was around 12, my father um, bought me a pair of Bobos. I don't know if you remember what those are, but back in our day, that was the four stripe Adidas that were from Kmart. Um, and I went to school and everybody made fun of me. And at that point, I said, I need to do something because I don't want to wear Bobos or Rustler jeans to school. So I wanted to wear Jordash. <laughs> Jordash. <laughs> and, and some three stripe Adidas. So um, I went out and I started mowing yards and uh, shoveling sidewalks in the wintertime and was a caddy. Uh, I was a busboy at 13 years old in an Italian restaurant, and uh, I figured out how to be an entrepreneur, make money, and and have the things that I wanted, and it just stuck. Just um, never stopped. Yeah, and then I went in the Air Force. Mm. Um, yeah. You went in the Air Force? I did. I went in the Air Force because my parents couldn't afford college, and at the time, I thought I needed a college. I'm not a college graduate, um, but I, at the time, that's what all my friends were doing, so I went to, uh, I wanted to go to college, so I joined the Air Force because they said I could go to school and also have a job at the same time. So I was like, I'm gonna go in the Air Force. And I did that and uh, two and a half years in, they deployed me to Dahran, Saudi Arabia. And uh, that was an eye opener. Shukran marhaba katana khawar. Yeah, something like that. Um, and uh, when I was over there and they took control of my life, I realized that I didn't ever want that to happen again. I wanted to be in complete control. And, and as unpatriotic as it may sound, I didn't join the military to go to war. I went to go to school. And uh, so then I figured out that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't want to have anybody controlling my life anymore. And, and here I am today. Damn. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of dips and challenges in between. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of failure. Do you think being a good-looking dude helped you? You know, I think it does help. Of course um, it helps. It, it does help. Of course it helps. Um, you know, being well put together, I mean, people pay attention. People um, pay attention instantly. You walk into a room, you're a good-looking dude or a good-looking chick, you automatically have an advantage. Yep, but then most of those people, when they open their mouth, they don't have the assets to back up the looker. They don't have the knowledge. That's right. Or they kind of, you know, they have the physical appearance down, but they don't have the mental 
capacity or they haven't worked on their intern internal selves you know what i mean right or just you know self educate like i said i did not graduate from college i um, when i went in the military i got taken out of college then i got out of yeah. the military and then i started a business and after i was in business a year my mentor at the time i told him i was going to go back to school and who's your mentor um i have a couple but uh, chris burke is one of them yeah. um you ever wrote him a check i have well then he's not a mentor well, he, <laughs> I, he's a consultant. Oh, you know okay. the difference between a mentor and a consultant? Mentor is like my grandpa, okay? He mentored me. Dude never charged me a dime. He just put his arm around me, brought me under his wing, and gave me some life lessons. That's a mentor, okay? As soon as you write a mentor a check, they cease to become, men, they cease to be mentors, and now they're consultants. Okay. So have you had any mentors? I, yeah, my grandfather was a mentor for sure. <laughs> sure, sure, everyone's yeah, grandpa's yeah. a mentor. And he taught me a, a lot of lessons. But you know, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge you on this, Brad. Um, you know, I always I've had a lot of free golf lessons in my life. Yeah, and I'm not a professional golfer. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really not that great at it. I'm decent, but as soon as I started paying for golf lessons, um, my game got a lot better. And I and I tell a lot of people I didn't that, say you shouldn't pay for advice okay. and education. Yeah. Okay. Great. I think a mentor is someone that you you know takes you under their wing, and you don't pay. Like I'm being mentored by my friend. You know, hey, I got some mentoring from this professor that I go to school with or something. That's mentoring to me. And again, it's just my opinion, and I share it with someone who articulated it perfectly. Patch Baker, who's who's a Marine, got out of the Marines and did some stuff, but. He said it the other day, and I started laughing. I said, "Dude, that's funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that," because he said people co- people call me all the time and they want me to mentor them, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm not I'm not a mentor. Like I'm a consultant. Like you can pay me for my knowledge, but I'm not a mentor. I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm not gonna take you under my wing." So anyway, it's semantics. Continue with continue no, with no, your no, story. No, 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 no. I love it. I mean, and and I you know I also look at you as a mentor. You know, when I met you, you well, I ain't charged you a dime. Well, no, no, not for my advice. That's true. You haven't. So you, you, I guess you would be a mentor. That's right. You're always dropping bombs. Um, I'm giving you one for that. You ain't lying about that. It's shit. true. Every time I come here to Lightspeed to record content, every single time we walk out the door with knowledge that we didn't have before we came in. You always make it a point every time you have an interaction with me via phone, via Zoom, or in person. There's always something that you're helping me do to take my business or my other businesses to the next level. So I appreciate that. Well, you're welcome. Now, where in your life did you become like Mr. Nice Guy? Because most people act like they're nice. If you guys follow Jay on Instagram, at Jay Adkins 3, is it? Correct. Go follow him on Instagram. He's, he's married to some Latino movie star or something. Not even or something. She technically is. Um, Jimenez? Jimena? Jimena. Jimena. Anyway. Duque, she, she, she's probably one of the most famous. Yeah, but she's uh, got, she's she's got she's millions beautiful. of followers. Uh, like 10 million. Yeah. So she's like, she's like the real deal. And seems sweeter than hell. I've only, I've only seen her through the stories. But Jay seems sweeter than like even Jimena. Like what makes you, you know, you're always, call, you're always on there and loving on your son and loving on your baby. And you seem almost like, I almost feel like I should pull over when I watch your stories and like, just like feel better about myself. Well, it's, what, what, where, where'd you get that? Um, I think from my mother, uh, my mother uh, never met a stranger. Uh, she, my grandfather as well. And they were just always nice to every single person they came in contact with because that next person could change your life. So don't you feel kind of, um, I don't even know the word feminine being, being so nice. Absolutely not. How come? Um, I just think it's a difference maker when you connect with people. If um, doesn't embarrass you at all. No. Cause you know, this is the thing when people look at me from the outside, they always think there's going to be something different that comes out. And I'm, you know, I think it's always a pleasant surprise to know that, you know, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. And I think that's because, you know, and I, and I know you've told your story too, but when you come from nothing um, and you don't forget that every single day, I think it just makes you a different person because I remember where I came from. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying that I think you're feminine or people view you as feminine because you're definitely not feminine. It's just that soft, 
inside. What do you call it, Greg? That soft inside. Uh, I think it's uh, what I would describe it as him being vulnerable. Yeah, like he'll give you a hug, no problem. Yeah. And there's people out there that want to act macho. They don't give the hug. They they're not they're not they don't come across with that. You know, I care about you quality. And every time I'm watching his stories, I feel like I want to cry and give someone a hug. <laughs> go watch it. Go watch his stories, folks. Go watch his stories. The people on your live right now, they know what I'm talking about. That's why everybody loves you. Cause like, oh damn, look how nice he is. But dude, I'm just wondering where you got that. Cause I almost have the opposite. It's not that I'm not nice. It's just like, I get kind of embarrassed, like being all huggy and touchy and emotional. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I guess it's my mother. My mother was a huge influence in my life, and she just... Well, that's probably what it is, your mom. Yep. She loved everyone, and... Yeah, my, 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 my dad and mom got divorced when I was, like, two, so I didn't see much of my mom. Now, I had a mom, because my dad remarried, but... And my mom, like, I was her favorite. My I say mom, but she's my stepmom. I was her favorite. She was a teacher, so she was responsible for me, you know, knowing my ABCs like at two and a half years old and being what I would say smart, but I think she missed the the love and affection part. That's why when, you know, dudes want hugs, I'm like, that's weird. Like my wife's parents are all like they're a beaver cleaver family. My wife tells her brother, love you all the time. Yeah. What's that about? Well, you know, and it's funny, my, my 14 year old son, um, my stepson, uh, that's been in my life two and a half years now. He says it to me every single day. And I think it comes from his mother and the affection that she gets. He's a very affectionate kid. And, you know, we clicked as soon as we met, which, you know, he could make my life a living hell um, because he was a single child with his mom for 12 years. And then here I come and, you know, I'm taking some of that time away. So I think... Yeah, but he, you guys are always working out together. Yep. And that's part of what I mean. Like, you, you, you're you're giving him a hug, telling him you love him. I'm thinking, damn, dude, I wish I was like that. How yeah. do I get like that? How does someone develop that? I guess just that vulnerable thing. Let, letting, I mean, you, do you, you love people. Man. I mean, I see you interact. I've seen you at my event. I've seen you at your own event. Like, you love people a lot. And you want to help every single person. You shared a... A video with us yesterday that when we read it frontwards, I was surprised these types of things were coming out of your mouth. And then I read it backwards. I was like, okay, there is the real Bradley. Yeah. You know, that that's, um, you are that person, but I just think that maybe outwardly you, um, you know, we all have characters that we project and I just know that the character that I project is the real me. And I want people to know that about me and not be this hard shell because people judge um, and think, oh, look at this. People judge, folks. People judge and think that you are something that you're not until you open your mouth and you let them get to know you a little bit. And I think it's helped in me being able to have the friendships and build the businesses that I have because business comes to me now because people trust me immediately because I am open, I am honest, and I am vulnerable. And and also when you're vulnerable to that, I think that people know that you're going to look out for them yeah. as well as look out for yourself. Well, I think you either are or you're not. Or you're faking it. Because again, I'm not faking it, but I do feel dumb in those situations. Like, I don't know why. And what I want to do is figure out, what I'm trying to drive at is, how do we break down these walls that we've built up over the years? Well, I, how, why do you have that wall? Like, Well, I don't. Okay. Like, again, dude, I'll give people a hug now, but you know, I still feel stupid. Now, why? I don't know. Why do I do a million things I do? But again, the, the part of keeping it real is, you know, I can, I don't mind that, but how do we break down walls? Because there's a lot of people walking around the world with these fronts, these walls, they don't know who they are. So because so long ago they were hurt by their parents or by their girlfriends or by their boyfriends or by something hurt them where they built up a wall and now they want to be like you, for example. They want to tell people they love them. They want a hug. They want that close, nurturing relationship, but they don't have it. And that's where I'm trying to find out how we can help people that are listening. And just Because you know there's a lot of people like that. They're, that. they're they're feeling alone. They're feeling empty. Look at depression. I mean, why are pe- so many people depressed? Like, what are you depressed about? And And you talk to them and it's like, dude, there's nothing to be depressed about, but they literally are actually depressed. Why? I believe, and this is just my belief, 
somewhere along the way they got hurt or they imagined they were hurt. And so they built up this wall and now they're walking around not even knowing that they're holding back that love and affection and emotion that they're, that they're hungry to feel, but no one gives it to them because they don't give it out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I walk into rooms where everybody's hugging and they'll walk up to me and shake my hand. Why? Well, because they know that like, I'd rather shake your damn hand. But at the end of the day, why is that? Well, because as, as they got to know me, they could sense, like, people hug you, I bet. Yep. See? See? That's because people can sense it. You don't have that wall up. Nobody's ever hurt you by getting close, apparently. How many people have been hurt when they let someone in? But it works for you. You have tons of relationships with great people because you have a different way of approaching them. But And I'll hug you guys, by the way. Don't, don't think I won't. Okay, I will. I, got, I, ju- I just I got the message. No I, more hugs. Yeah, I just don't. No, I'll hug people. But I mean, it's like, you know, people tell me they love me. Like, you know, they'll be on the phone. They'll be like, you know, love you, bro. And I'll be like, all right, see you soon. Like, I just feel weird. My own family, my brothers and sisters, you know, we don't say we love each other. When my wife does to her brother, I think weird. But it's not weird. It's probably normal and healthy. I must have built up a wall some somewhere along the way where it's like, that doesn't seem right to me. So just imagine, for the people listening, the relationships and opportunities you miss out on if you are like that and you're not willing to have that relationship. Listen up, folks. Nicest guy in the world, Jay Atkins, just told you right there, and that's a fact right there. Because relationships are the new economy. Like I'm telling you, dude, I could literally lose my business, pick up the phone from the relationships I have and get probably 500 job offers, 16 freaking new business venture partners. It's all relationships, wouldn't you say? All. It's everything to do with relationships and um, people getting to know the real you because it's about relationships and trust. That's going to create opportunities. Yeah. Well, I I did podcast the other day where I brought up the importance of trust because people don't understand like you let me on your stage which got me to be a police officer my honorary badge came from you being on me being on your stage now somebody said when I was telling them the story because it was always a dream to be a cop but then I got a DUI and that was that but at the end of the day someone said well that was lucky well you trust that when I went on stage, I was going to provide value to your audience. You might have had a little bit of a, oh, should I really do this? But you also trusted that I wouldn't drop a bunch of F-bombs and I'd bring value, yes or no? Yes. If you didn't trust that fact, would you have put me on your stage? Absolutely not. And I wouldn't have my badge. I wouldn't be an actual honorary police officer. So do you know why you have your badge, though? The real reason? Why? Because you ask for it. Well... That's true, too. I mean, so that's another thing. You have to ask for people that you build relationships. Well, I didn't ask for it. So technically, you're incorrect, sir. Well, you mentioned it. No, I did not. I didn't ask for a badge at all. I, she, she came up after my talk and said that she loved what I said, and she was asking me some questions, and we got to talking about how I grew up. And she said, you always wanted to be a police officer? And I said, yeah. And then she came back the next day and said... You always wanted to be a police officer. And I said, I'm looking at her like, well, yeah. And first of all, I didn't know she was a mayor. Okay. And I'm like, well, yeah. And she goes, well, I made a phone call and found out that I have the authority to actually make you one right here on the spot. And I said, no, kidding. Tell the truth. She said, nope. I'm like, how? And she said, well, I'm the mayor of wherever I'm the mayor of. And I'm like, oh, wow, man, she's a mayor. And she brought an already typed up letter sworn from the chief of police and the mayor of the city. And she said, I need to swear you in because you need to be a sworn officer for me to give you a badge and make you a legitimate, actual police officer. It's just honorary, which means you don't have to go to work, but it impa- you know, it's, it's like you're a real police officer. And I'm thinking I'm just going to get a little ceremony trinket thing. No, man, full on real badge, real letter. It's legit, and I didn't ask for it. So, so let me ask you this, Brad. Let me ask you a question. So you're asking me about these nice things, and you say that that's not your, your MO. That's not how you operate. No, no, no. But, but, but hold on. It's just my personality. No, no, it's your personality. But you get a mayor to give you a badge, 
after meeting you. So what is it about you that people are just led to and wanting? Because, you know, when I met you, the first thing I said after the conversation is I want to be friends with that guy because we think a lot and I want to get to know him. So I don't say that about everybody I meet. So there's something there that you put off that, you know, is also really effective. So what do you think it is? I think it's an approachable intelligence. That's what I think. Well, approachable, I, because again, you 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 don't want to be friends with somebody that you don't think is smart, do you? No, so like I, you don't hang out with dumbasses, do you? No. So the, I'll tell you the answer for me is the reason I wanted it because of that, because you were intelligent. We could have a conversation. You were always thinking about the next move on the chessboard. And I'm attracted to people like that. I want to be around people. You know, they say you're the the five people you're closest to. And when I met you, I was like, okay, this guy is so different. Like he thinks different. He's driven. He's thinking outside the box. He's creative. And just you wanting to take my business to the next level. And that's what you're always doing is to look at how can I make my training system better than anybody else's. And, you know, you've, you've talked about interactivity. You know, Greg and I were talking yesterday you know, every single time we come here, and, and we're going to get it at some point. We, we will. I promise you we're going to have all interactivity. But the, the, just that thing that you keep, you keep at it. And, well, it, it's only And because, also, I'll tell you another thing. Yeah. You always return my calls. If I call you or text you, usually within 15 minutes, you're on the phone with me handling my concerns. So th- those are the type of people I like to deal with because that's how I am. If you text me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get right back to you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know why I'm like that, but I know why I'm so passionate about interactivity. Because, again, how many courses are out on the internet? Millions? Millions. How, how many of them supposedly don't work? All of them. All of them. Millions of them. Well, that's a, 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 it's incorrect. Okay, That's like saying penicillin doesn't work when you've never taken it, but you thought you took it, so you're claiming it doesn't work. You totally believe it doesn't work. But you do, you weren't really taking it. You were taking the penicillin and you were throwing it behind your shoulder. And that's not how you take penicillin. Videos, straight linear videos is not training. Okay. People think they're training. I buy your course for a thousand bucks. And now I say, oh, I did it and it didn't work. Well, in order to actually learn and change and, 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 you know, use that information, you have to actually internalize it, learn it, right? Learning takes repetition, right? Learning takes practice. Learning takes accountability. There's four ingredients, good content, practice, repetition, and accountability. And if you don't have those four, you're not training. You're, you're being exposed to the information. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So like I, I watch mixed martial arts. Doesn't make me a black belt. So watching shit isn't the answer especially watching it once. And now if you go ask millions of people who have taken millions of courses that don't work, ask them how many times they went through it. Once, usually, maybe twice. Ask them how many were held accountable to what it taught. Because most people go through a course and be like, oh, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. So nobody's actually doing and learning from these courses. They're buying them but they think they're doing them, hence saying they don't work. Well, and there may be a bunch that wouldn't work even if you did it right because it's not good content. So assuming it's good content, it doesn't mean it's going to change your life or change your behavior or change your results unless you take it and you watch it a million times and you apply what's in there and you hold yourself accountable and you practice and you continue Okay, training isn't something you did, it's something you do. So why am I passionate about interactivity? Because too many people try to try to force you to adapt to their content rather than allow the content to adapt to you. So how many insurance agents have you met in your life? Thousands. Are they all the same? Probably not one is the same. Okay, so if they're not all the same, why do you want to let them all watch the same video? Well, because you don't understand interactivity, which is why I keep working on you. Because right. once you do, dude, you're going to make one video, but it won't be a video. It'll be an interactive module because you have the technology to do so. And you can pop up and ask a few questions. And when they respond, you you change what it is you were going to say. Like if I said, I'm going to teach you how to sell insurance. Uh, have you ever sold anything before? And you say, yes. 
And I say, you know, okay, do you have experience? You say, yes, I'm not going back to the beginning and wasting your time. I'm going to acknowledge that you have some sales experience. Then I might inquire about what it is and see if it's real. I can do that with interactivity because what Lightspeed really was designed to do and allow you to do is emulate what you would do in real life. And if I told you, dude, come up here, sit with me for a week and train me how to sell insurance in real life, would you just walk in and run your mouth the entire time you're here? Or would you ask questions and interact with me? Interact. Yeah. So I'm just trying to emulate what happens in real life because you can't get the real Jay Atkins. You can't get the real Greg Gray full time, period, because you're entrepreneurial and you wouldn't do that. That's called working for somebody. So no matter how much money anybody has, they cannot get the real team, the ASA team. They can't get any of them full time. So what's the next best thing? A video? No. That's like the third or fourth or fifth best thing. The next best thing is virtual versions of you guys that would ask the questions the same way you would in real life. They will respond to the answers the same way they would in real life. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, that's the next best thing to the real person. So I just always want to get as high as you can get, be as valuable as you can be. And when I see people make regular videos, I just know that they're, they're down here when they could be up here. And it's no more expensive. It doesn't cost you any more to make it. It's just how you make it. It's knowing to make it. So every time you guys show up, I'll be working on that. Because once you guys have full motion interactive video, you're, the people you're teaching will get it better. They'll feel more engaged. They'll not you know, think in their head that I've been through it. Because again, you can go through a, a, an interactive module 10 times and get different answers the whole time, theoretically. So at the end of the day, man, repetition is the key to learning. Practice, accountability, and good content. If you can add, make it adaptive to the individual because everybody's different. They learn different. What excites them is different. And if you ask questions in your video because you have the technology to, to make it interactive, if you pop up and ask a few questions, not only can you adapt and make them more engaged and learn better, but you're also able to collect that data. So now you, the real team, can look at that data based on what you've asked and help somebody based on who they are. What if I have a, a, an agency that's already doing $10 million a month and a, you know, my book of business is incredible and, and you're telling me how to make my book of business better? Well, what if my problem is I can't, I can't do something else? You didn't even ask. You don't even know with a video. But if you walked into my office, what would you do? You'd be like, well, dude ain't got a problem generating business. He's got a problem you know, retaining it or whatever you know, you've diagnosed. And you would talk to me about what my problem was. Right. Yep. That's interactive. Well, let me let me tell you um, what this training has done for my business, though. For people listening, you know, we started training every single day with the platform in January. Repetition. Repetition. Um, my team and, and you you do something even above most people for insurance agencies. They have weekly or daily zooms, which is the live element, yep. right? Where you can ask real questions, and now it's really interactive. Correct. And we're role playing, which is one of the big things. Role playing, but my team's um, incomes are up forty eight percent, coincidentally, and my production is up sixty two point three percent over any other year that I've ever been in business. Coincidentally, S no, 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 absolutely not. What's it's it for? The training. Yeah. Well, no, it's because you're actually training. Correct. See, most companies don't train. Don't train. They're I, exposing I their employees to information, and then they're wondering why it doesn't work. Well, because if you want it to work, you must train. Just like if you go to the gym once and do sit-ups, nothing's going to happen. You have to go repeatedly, repetition, repetition. Another thing, employees are usually uncomfortable. I tell you, you got to go through this video 16 times. I guarantee you their eyes are going to roll. They're going to go, what? That's stupid. No, what's stupid is going through it once and pretending that they actually learned something. That's stupid. Go through it 16 times. Make it uncomfortable. Is it uncomfortable to go to the gym and lift weights until it hurts? Absolutely. Is it uncomfortable passing on a damn cronut? <laughs> yes. Okay, you want the results, folks. You need to be uncomfortable. That, there's, there's, there's training. There's no, there's, it's the same. 
Well, that's what that's what we say in the agency because we we role play. I have forty two employees that role play every single day, and they role play in front of each other. So they have forty or eighty eyeballs on them, I should say, while they're training. So we always say to get comfortable, you have to get really uncomfortable. That's true. So that's what we do every day. We get uncomfortable. Even the new people, they come in, we just put them on the spot. So the the, train, the training is everything. It's it's created a business for me. And I, I was sharing with you my results yesterday of what kind of business we're writing, what kind of money we're bringing in every month. I'm trying to pull you in the insurance business because I think you would be really, really good at it. So I, I, it's a great, great training platform. I well, mean, it, well, it really is. You you have You have... I mean, when I first did a meeting with you, you said this is there's nothing else like it, and there truly isn't. You've created a an excellent product, and that's what I do everything with is excellence, and that's why I was so attracted to you because you don't do anything unless it's with perfection. Well, I appreciate that, and I think I learned that from my dad at a young age. He said, you know, if you're going to do something, kill it. Like, don't do it unless you're going to kick ass at it. You know, he didn't really care if I played sports, never came to any of my sports, sports tournaments or, or anything but one, the first one. I was in a swim meet, just joined the team. I was real young. And you started out in this guppy league. Well, my first meet, he came. I, I beat the rest of the kids so badly, they disqualified me and said he shouldn't be in this league. My dad basically told these guys, oh, man, you're stupid. Like, this is my first year. I, w- I was supposed to be in that league. I just happened to be amazing at swimming, I guess, at a young age killed all the other kids so badly they disqualified me he never came to another sporting event but and again my dad had a unique personality I'll tell you that but he always said if you're gonna do it kick ass at it in other words be the best you can be or just don't do it like you're gonna embarrass yourself like that's what I think he was saying and I and I and it always stuck so I I do believe that but Who's responsible for the perfect surgery, the surgeon or the scalpel? I'm just giving you the scalpel. You guys are doing the surgery. Right. That's why it's working. Because I give a lot of people a scalpel, and they're just freaking slicing up freaking chopped liver. Nothing's happening, and they don't understand why. So although I'll take the credit, it's all me. It's actually what you guys are doing with it that matters. You are doing the repetition. You are holding people accountable. You are practicing role playing. Why? Because you because you care. That's why. So if you guys are listening <clears throat> and you have an insurance company or anything, because again, your shit, by the way, can go outside the insurance company. Yeah, it's very general. It's it's very just business driven. I mean, everything around hiring. Yeah, but I mean, you you specifically help insurance agencies generate more revenue. And when you walk in and they join your your system, because it's it's more than just a video. You have a whole system. Agencysalesacademy.com, by the way, if you guys want to check this out. If you're in the insurance game, you better go check out the website and reach out to these guys. They got more packages than just the the VT. But you can bring that outside to anything. Just take out the word policy and put in the word product because I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people that are in one niche and they believe that's what they do when in reality they can take exactly what you do and go apply it to a doctor's office. And it's the same thing. They're not selling policies. They're selling veneers. Did I say dentist or doctor? doctor. Okay, well, they're selling herpy medicine at the end of the day dude it works anywhere you go because you guys are you guys are teaching people processes you're teaching people mindset you're teaching people you know how to do more and get better and it works in any industry you know what i'm saying so let me ask you another question how do you think like you didn't always have a bunch of dough and now you're killing it to the to the 10th degree what about Two years ago, you're doing better now than you were two years ago. Oh yeah, I do better every single year. I mean, that's the goal is to always get better every year. And you know, hold and- on. Although I'd modify that to be every day, but again, oh, yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. Cool. I mean, I got a big T-shirt coming just says "Outdo Yesterday." If you can just outdo yesterday every day. Well, and I know this is a. I, I try to get better than this, but I tell everyone if you just improve one percent every single day, which is realistic, you could do that by reading for 30 minutes or listening to Dropping Bombs podcast or, you know, listening to a book on Blinkist, whatever it is, just try to get better every single day. And 
you know, for me, money is a measuring stick. Um, at this point, it's not like, oh, I want to just make so much more money because I want to have all these things. I'm, I do it because it's a measuring stick, but I also do it because I want other people to make money. Yeah. That's in my operation. So, you know, when I bring people in, they have, they have a way to grow. So and if you're looking for a job, I promise you it's the best place to work for in America. I have a great team. I have great managers. But that's what we do. We look at, I want, I want everyone on my team. So you'll give someone an opportunity as well? Absolutely. Folks, and you can make six figures in this business first year if you if you come. Let me in. ask you a question. You got training? We have a little bit of training. Yeah, you come Unbelievable. in. Unbelievable. So, so you can get a person with just a little ambition and a willingness to work and zero experience and zero experience and turn them into a, a agency owner yep. or help get on your team. Either one. Yep. For all the people that are scared to be entrepreneurs because of the instability that lies ahead, well then. Get a get a job. You know you can be an entrepreneur. Join the team. Help them grow the, the the company. But some of you listening, most of you are probably entrepreneurial. You'll give them an office. Well, and this is what they should do. If if you're scared at first, go learn everything not to do from somebody. Because you know you. That's me. That's my next book, the hard way. Yeah. So so people go and and they want to start their business and they fail and they lose a lot of money. Yeah. I always tell people go. I mean, because, you know, everyone complains about working for a boss and I hate when he does this. So just learn all those things that you hate about another business. And then when you go start your own business, you know everything not to do, which is so much more important of what to do. So if you can learn all the what nots, then reading and, and learning from other people like you and Greg Gray, then you can learn what to do. And if you have that combination, because so many people are concerned about what I need to do, what I need to do, what I need to do when they need to be just as concerned about what not to do and how to manage people and how not to manage people and how to treat people and how to be nice um, and get... Because, you know, when you're nice to people, people do things for you. When you're not nice, they're saying they're going to do something for you, but then as soon as you turn your back, they're giving you the middle Yeah, finger. and that's the thing, man. Pe- people assume because they smile and act nice that they are nice. Like people say, I'm nice. I think the measurement of nice is internal. Like, you know deep down if you're nice somebody can think you're nice doesn't make you nice i always say you know in my opinion you're nice if 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 like you'll do the right thing when nobody's looking so it's funny that you know i want to kind of back up because it's funny that you said that you think i'm so nice because i will tell you some people because i'm so intense on a mission and and i don't really like people getting in the way sometimes I, not sometimes i've heard a lot of people where i'm they don't think i'm nice why? Because they haven't had time to take a conversation. I'm just well. You know why? Because always... you might not be being the what what to them what they view as nice. And when I say nice, I don't mean you're nice to everybody. I mean that internally, you care about people. Like you care about people internally. Like you're nice. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, and I and I think anyone that like has a higher level intelligence that can see people's you know, personas and auras. And I can see people like instantly. I meet people. This guy's a scumbag. They can be sitting there smiling and kissing my ass and high-fiving and trying to act cool. I I can read people so fast. It's just, I think it's one of those, you know, how everybody's given a gift. My gift. I think I have the same gift. My gift is to read people. And I don't, you know, point them out and, you know, hey, you're a fraud. You just because, keep your distance. Well, not only that, I could, you know, it's not a perfect sense. Like maybe I make a mistake. I give everyone the benefit of the doubt. But nine times out of 10, I see people. Two months later, someone says, oh, that guy did this or that guy did that. And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that guy was a scumbag. And why can't, why can't people just realize we're all, you know, Brothers and sisters, like we're all humankind, like be nice to your next person. Cause I'm telling you that ripple, that ripple effect matters. You know, I'm a little bit, you know, worried about this world we're living in right now. There's some crazy nonsense going on. And it's like, is it evil? Is it fricking, you know, spiritual evil happening? Cause if it is, what can we do? We're just mortal humans. But, but, but when you get inside yourself, you're not mortal anymore. Now you're a being, a spiritual being that has a mind. Let me ask you a question. How much does a mind weigh? Oh, it's the heaviest thing in your... No, literally. Are you talking about the brain or the mind? The mind. Oh, I have... Do you have a mind? Uh, Yes, I have. No one will say they don't have a mind, but no one can tell me how big it is or how much it weighs or what temperature is it. Why is that? 
because because it doesn't exist physically. And if it doesn't exist physically, well then where is it? What is it? That proves there's another dimension, folks. There's another dimension and you're in it. You are in it, not your body. Our bodies are here, but your mind, like if I say picture a monkey on top of an elephant with a Slurpee in its hand. What are you picturing right now? Monkey with a Slurpee in its hand. Okay, that's that's your mind. You just thought of it in your mind. And people say, no, it's your brain. It's not your brain, dude. It's, we've chopped up a lot of brains, and there's nothing in there called a mind. The, a mind is something else. So that proves there's something else. And not to mention, that proves that anything's possible. In your mind, you determine whether you're going to win or lose. Would you agree? Yep. And, Every, you, and you may not be conscious. See, there's a conscious level where, no, I'm going to win, but your subconscious says, no, you're not. You don't believe in yourself. You're a piece of shit. You screw everybody you talk to. You, you, you're, a, you're a bad dude. And you know you are. Why? Because you've been you your whole life. You know if you're a piece of shit, but you may not be aware of it. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's why I always tell people, you got to forgive yourself, man. You made some mistakes, but now move forward and do right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So what would you share with all these bomb squad members? The the listeners I call the bomb squad. You're in the bomb squad, if you listen. Every day. So what would you tell everybody out there knowing that, hey, dude, I got people that are way more successful than me listening. I got people that are just starting out. And I got people that have been screwing up their whole lives. What would you tell them? One bit of advice that you've learned in all your years and heartache and challenges What's the one thing that you want to give them before we jam? Man, that's a great question. One thing that I want to give them. I, I guess always be learning and changing every single day. And outdo yesterday. And and what I mean by that is, you know, my father is a very uneducated, opinionated individual. And He's not willing to learn the next thing. Is he rich? No. Coincidence? Correct. Is that a coincidence he's not rich? No. And the, the, he doesn't evolve. And so I would just say evolve every single day and always don't go with the trends, set the trend. Dude, this, this big advice right here from Jay Atkins. Follow him at Jay Atkins 3 because I think as human beings, our happiness is centered in reaching our potential. And when people are not happy, they're looking for things to achieve when in reality, they need to do exactly what you just said and develop themselves personally. Like I think happiness is centered in personal development and too many people are out there not developing themselves. They're not reaching their potential and there's this hole they don't know how to fill. And it's because they're not, they're not, evolving as a freaking individual. And that's all ego. It's all ego or, or, or stupidity or naivety. What do you say? Naivety. naivety. Yeah. It could be naive. A lot of people are taught wrong. You know, you grow up, you get told stuff, your parents tell you stuff, your mentors tell you stuff. And guess what? That stuff might be just straight up bullshit. Got to evolve. Yeah. Well, guess, guess how you figure out if it's bullshit. By learning, by doing exactly what you just said. Greg Gray taught me something. Oh, good. That's it. No, next day I learned something else. I learned something else. I learned something else. I learned something else. By the way, that's repetition. And all of a sudden I realized Greg Gray was full of shit. Right? Am I lying? Well, Not Greg Gray individually. Right. I'm using you as an example. Not virtually, you're correct. Right. Yeah. It's, because, it's because you followed your advice. And that's how you... That's how you develop, and that's when you start to realize, oh, damn, we were taught wrong. Money's not bad. In my opinion, you should have all the money you can. You should be focused on money. Why? Because with money, and I didn't make the society and the culture. It just is what it is. With money, you have things. With things, you can develop yourself. You can travel to exotic places, other cultures. You can learn. You can go to China for two months and learn better than you can watching a video, right or wrong. Correct. Okay, so that takes money. You, not, you might need to bring a nanny. That takes money. Someone's sick in the hospital, can't get the right care. That takes money. 
Christmases are better with money. Birthdays are better with money. You can help more people with money. You can help yourself better with money. And with money, you're able to use things and to personally reach your full potential. You need to use things. Am I lying? No. Nope. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, hey, you folks, know, one, reach your potential. That was some damn good advice, Jay. So, one, one more thing is just I, I want people not to miss is you have to do it every day. Repetition. Because, I mean, if you look at LeBron James, Tiger Woods, those guys don't stop. They're constantly trying to make their game yeah. better. Bradley, you don't stop. When I come here, you're always in a meeting. You're always talking about how to take the game to the next level every single day. And I see you on Saturdays and Sundays doing stories, coming to the office. You got to do it every single day. Even if it's 30 minutes, it's, like it's got to be in your shower, man. Just Absolute, break it down to you know, simplicity. Such a great, if you I go don't take a read, shower, you smell good, you look good for the day. Uh, I'm done. I took a shower. Well, don't take a shower for a while and see what happens. It all goes away. Yep. Every single day. Folks, Jay Atkins has been a pleasure. I need you back on the show when we have a little more time. Yes, thanks for having me on. They got crap to film, folks. They're making serious moves out here at Lightspeed. They got an unbelievable training system, and it's not just the online portion. They've got a whole program. If you guys want to make money, especially if you're attached to the insurance world, I'd go to agencysalesacademy.com or reach out to these guys because they got something special going on. Go out and rate the podcast. Share the podcast. Follow Jay Atkins 3 and Greg Gray. Where are you at? Greg Gray, open mic. At Greg Gray, open mic. A Y or E Y? A Y, thank you. Greg Gray, at open mic. And that dude right there is badass. Like, you, 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 you may have heard of him because a lot of people have, but I promise you a whole lot more will be. Till next time, kids. Mm-hmm.